Hello, I'm Monica Price and welcome to Cuppa TV. On today's show we welcome Lindsay Santoro and Michael Crump, two stand-up comedians who will be performing in this year's Comedy Festival in Birmingham. I'm also joined by author and entrepreneur Maureen Haddock, who joins me to talk about her books, blog and life. guests are Lindsay Santoro and Michael Crump, two stand-up comedians who are going to be performing at this year's Birmingham's Comedy Festival. Welcome guys. Hi. Laughing already. It's gonna... <laughs> we haven't started yet and we're laughing. Yeah. Lindsay, welcome to the show. And Mike okay. as well. I can call you Mike. Yeah. Can is we, that allowed? Yeah, can we what you want? Just, yeah. just one of the most things. <laughs> so guys, this is a fantastic opportunity. Have you done anything like this before? Lindsay, I'm going to ask you first. Um, I was part of uh, last year um, the Birmingham Comedy Festival. I was actually in the Breaking Talent. Um, what's it? Breakthrough Talent. I don't remember what it's called. Breakthrough, yes. Breaking, Breaking Talent, Talent Award. Award. Yes. It's at the Glee Club. It's like the opening night. Yes. And they get all the uh, new comedians that they think are up and coming in this showcase, and then they pick a winner. It's quite good actually. Smash it, day, mate. I did. I had a great time. Yes. Did you didn't win time. though. Oh. Won. I, I, know. Know. I did. I stole it. Stole it off the winner. <laughs> and Mike, how about you? Have I done stand up before? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you've yeah. been doing it for how long? Uh, two and a half years. Two and a half years. Started in February 2013. Is that two and a half years? Yeah. Right, isn't it? Yeah. And Did do you enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah, it's good fun, isn't it? It's good fun. I mean, and crazy have you people. worked together? Is this the first time you're going to be working together? Or have you worked together before? We've really? kicked together, but we've never done a show yeah, together. Yeah, no, we've not done a show. No. We've, we've, we've never we gigged together. We have. Oh God, I've repressed that memory. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that's your husband, didn't I? Too big spender. Yeah. <laughs> he he loved it. What the, so what kind of... <laughs> I got his number. <laughs> <laughs> Spoke to him on Grindr. Carry on. What kind of comedy do you do? Do you interact with the audience? Or are you one-liners? <sighs> Tell us about it, Mike. We, uh, I, my kind of stuff that I do is very, like, uh, interactive. I like to talk to the audience. Mm. I like to sit on people's laps and... Yeah. Um, Kind of make fun and just have a laugh. Yeah. Really, it's not very structured. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, well, but do you find it. that when you when uh, when you're up there with the audience, do you find it just goes with the flow? Depending yes. on the audience, yes. you know, depends the on how they react. Yeah. Yes. And what, have you ever had an audience that doesn't react with you? Uh, yes. Yeah. The best kind of audiences are kind of rough audiences, especially because I can be quite camp. They kind of react really well to that. But the the kind of what do you mean by rough? <laughs> no, if you, no, if I'm, you know, if I'm gigging in my hometown, yes. uh, like Blackheath, Cradley Heath, that kind of way, uh, it's more fun because it's like breaking stereotypes. Yeah. So. yeah. And how about for you, Lindsay? About what was the question? I sound <laughs> out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> does, does she do that when we talk? <laughs> oh, so how about for you? When you're when you're with the audience, how do, what's your comedy show like? Um, I just tell little stories about what's happened to me, and um, generally it's just horrible little events because mm. I have quite not a, a cursed life, but if you put me in a situation where something can go horribly wrong, I'm almost like. What about in your husband, like in the bathroom with your husband? What about that one? That's that was terrible. We can't say it on we the TV because people will cry. Can, <laughs> can you tell us another one? Tell us another one. <laughs> um, there was a time I caught, uh, I went into my kitchen and there was a rat in there and um, I managed to catch it in a bin and then I sat on the bin for about three hours and cried. That was, that was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I won't even ask. <laughs> What happened at the end of the three hours? Well, um, I, well, Were you rescued. Well, my, I called my friend and we went up to the, you know, the Beacon Hill in the Lickies, mm. and we set it free, but then it chased us. <laughs> <laughs> so. It liked, horrible. it liked you, liked being back where you Thought I loved it. I just oh, now, Mike, mm. you've done TV already. You've, you've just recently. Tell us about the show you've just done. Oh uh, yeah, I played a part in uh, Lenny Henry's um, semi-autobiographical film, mm -hmm. uh, Danny in the Human Zoo. I played mm -hmm. Terry, one of his childhood friends. And how was that? Uh, really fun, really good fun. Did you enjoy the experience? Yeah, oh yeah, of course, it was uh, amazing and uh, a really good opportunity. So. Yeah. And from that, are you hoping that something else will come from that? Yeah, I hope so, and it's definitely um, kind of helped with the stand-up stuff because I've started to get more gigs and things mm. off the back of that and um, something to put on posters, isn't it, I suppose? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, I Lindsay? Think. Would you like to, you know, do something on the television? Because as, as a woman being in, in comedy, I wanted to ask you how that felt because there aren't many female comedians, but there are getting more and more slowly coming through. Yeah. How do, how do, what do you feel about that? I've never myself had um, 
any issues. I just think it's a it 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 can get a bit a bit odd, especially like last night at Roughworks, mm. we're all sat round a table and I kind of looked round and I went, oh my God, there's only two girls here, mm. isn't that scary? Mm. But it is quite a scary thing mm. to do, but I think a lot of women are brave and I think mm. that, you know, it's good fun. I should get up female there. comedians, isn't it funny? Did you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, what a liar you are. Did you always <laughs> want to be a comedian? Um, it's it's something I've always wanted to do. Um, I did try and get into it when I was about I think I was about 18, but I don't think I was really worldly ready at that point. Why I, I thought it, what all I thought all I had to do was drink a bottle of wine and get on a stage and shout at people. It turns out there's a bit more to it than that. <laughs> Although you do it quite well. I do. I've got you a couple of baby sham. I do. And when you when you're performing, obviously because you, you work off each other, that's quite obvious here. And and is that how it is when you know people are going to see you at the festival? Well, we're doing a show with Danny. Yes, unfortunately, Danny we? couldn't be here today. Danny's the sensible one. So say hello one. to Danny. Yeah, Danny mm -hmm. is the sensible one, yeah. He's like kind of grounds us, doesn't he? Because we're a bit mad. Yeah, he's been sending us messages all morning. Has going, Please behave. Yeah, don't, don't swear. <laughs> don't swear. Don't tell any stories. So tell us about the act then. What are you going to be doing with Danny? With Danny? Uh, at the show or after the show? With, with Danny <laughs> at the show. <laughs> You can tell us about what you're doing after the show if you like. But I'd quite nah. like to hear what you're going to be doing at the show first. Oh, I'll tell you off camera. I'll tell you. Uh, um, we're going to we're doing 20 minutes each, aren't we? Yeah, we've like got an hour, we've got an hour show. Brilliant. So um, we're basically doing each our own little bit, and then I think we're trying to get another comedian involved, but we haven't had. Is that term say to compare? Yeah, because right, it'd be better if it's warmed up. Yeah, yeah let's have this conversation thing. afterwards. Yeah, just <laughs> just sort it out. yeah, so there's there's us three basically doing our own little sets and then at the end we're gonna have a little surprise. Got a little poster, can I show oh, you? Yes, yes, here's your poster. Just Excellent. pull it off, love, it's only bit. I know I'm not used to pulling things off. There we go. I've done it. This right. is the poster. A, lie, a lovely afternoon with Lindsay, Danny and Mike. Trying to hold the other side. Trying <laughs> to hold it. You don't right. look very <clears throat> smiley in that poster. No, because I'm wearing a pinny. That's yeah. mine, that is. That is so not my colour. Right. I didn't iron it. Can you see? Can yeah. you zoom in on the fact it's not ironed? That's and you're terrible. looking at me like I've just, like... And this is, this is Danny who can't be with us. Yes. You can tell his mum won't let him out because he, he stayed out late last night and his mum's upset with him so he can't go <laughs> out anymore for the week. <laughs> he's, he's, not, he's on tag and he's not allowed out past Mary Hill, did you say? No, that's what we're not allowed to say, he's on tag. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so tell us about, what's that set? Why, is it, is can it we sort let of a, go? You can let go of that now. <laughs> Unless you want to hold it, Mike, that's fine. I'm alright, thanks. You, so. can, you can do that. So you're going to be doing 20 minutes each mm. to form the hour? Yes. 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 Uh, to yeah. the audience, yes. live audience. And we will have biscuits as well. Uh, well biscuits. Quite right. That's it. And when you when you perform in front of an audience, Cindy, how does it feel? It's quite terrifying. I think I've got better at it recently, but I still get horrendous nerves. Do you? But as soon as I step on the stage, it mm. goes. Mm. But I I'm mean, awful. A lot of artists have that. Singing artists, you know, acts. You know, they're actually some of them are actually physically sick before mm. they actually go onto the stage. But you know, it's the adrenaline which keeps you going. I'm assuming. Yeah, I, I normally uh, pace around like I'm, I'm insane. Especially the last 30 seconds, especially when you know you've you got the compare and they're trying to warm up the audience for you. you just, I, I kind of lose my mind a little bit, that bit goes blank. But like I said, once I'm there, I'm, I'm alright. It's hard because if you know if, if it's tough and you know it's tough, then the, the nerves kind of mm. reach higher levels and it's horrible. Mm. Yeah. I would dry heave sometimes, I get so nervous. It's really? And then once you're on, you're fine. And, and then afterwards, there's high, like. I think it must, do you think it's the same for com all comedians? Because, I mean, you have to go on and you make people laugh. You have to make people laugh. And if you don't, then it, you, you, mm. must, you've got to, you can't just come off. You've got to continue trying to, to make worst, people laugh. That's the I think. Mm. Is, do, you th do you think about that or do you just go on and say, do you know what, I'm just going to go for it? Well, you've got in your head exactly what you want to say. I mean, you have to make it look like you, you, you're saying it off the, off the top of your head, don't you? Yes. You have to make it look like it's all new. You've never said it before yes. and it's all brand new stuff but obviously you've got it set out so if someone says to you you've got to do 10 minutes of material you know exactly how long you've got to do and you'll go up and do it so it's always like if you get halfway through a set you're like god this is going awful you just think five more minutes i know what i've got to say yes. and we can go <laughs> sometimes you can look at you can be in a in a in an audience and you can go oh you can misjudge it can't yeah you, you can go this is going to be horrible yeah. and then you'll get on stage and have the best gig of your life i yeah. think that when you think it's going to be really really bad that's when it's usually quite a nice kick. Really, really good. But it's when you're really ready and you're like, oh, I'm not too nervous, mm. that's when it's really mm. awful. I think the nerves get less the more I've done it, but I'm still horribly, horribly nervous. It yeah. depends if I haven't gig for ages, I'm more... I have that same, like, you know, when you first start, mm. and it's like, 
I can normally eat 20 chicken nuggets, but I can only eat four before a gig. Oh, no, I'm <laughs> old man. <laughs> I try. So for you, Mike, is it the same? Do you, do you get nervous, but you just, you know, adrenaline kicks in and you just go on the stage and do what you've got to do? I think nerves are good. I think they're uh, integral to, um, to, to being... To having a good gig, really, I think. Mm. If you're not nervous, there's something wrong. Because mm. it's a stand-up in front of like a group of strangers and say, oh, I'm going to make you laugh. is a pretty brave thing, I think. What's the largest audience you've had? Do you Doing know? stand-up? Mm. Uh, As a stand-up? About 250 people. Mm. I mean, that's a lot of people. Yeah. So, I always think, you know, comedians are very brave. You're very brave because you do. You go out or and daft. you've just got to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we're right in the head, aren't we? I've not met anyone who is normal, actually. Yeah. In stand-up? We're Generally, not. Like, it's just in Birmingham, really. <laughs> I think about this. Do you know anyone normal? No, and I don't want to either. Well, do, can you think of anyone that's normal? In life? J yeah. No? No. No. no? no? no. Are they all mad, or your friends? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah of oh, is that a good thing? Yeah. Yes. When I'm not visiting them <laughs> in hospital, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Feeding them medication, would you say? But do you, do you, when you write your material, do you think about your friends and your family? Do you base it on real the people in your life or is it just incidents that happen when it comes to your script? How most of my, most my set is based on, at the moment, it's based on my dad. My dad's a, quite a man's man and I'm obviously really into my, my, my drama and stuff. And, and uh, my, my set is basically just about how he kind of tried, as a kid, tried to make me toughen up and took me to boxing and stuff. And it's all about that kind of thing, really. So. It worked, did it? No, he didn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is he supportive of what you do? Oh, he loves it, yeah. He, he actually, when I started, he was like, I don't know why you're doing this. You're crap. <laughs> but then he saw he was. He was like, I think you're crap. You're funny. But then he saw that I was starting to get better and um, my material was about him, so he started to kind of give me material then. Oh, that's yeah. nice. What do you mean? Just abusing. <laughs> <laughs> Being abusive. <laughs> Oi, puff. <laughs> come here. Let's go. Can you not say that on the telly? No, it's bad. Yeah, but no, it's a quote. It's not real. I'm not saying it. That's what your dad said. That's what my dad said. <laughs> say. <laughs> that's not what someone goes. I'm not being racist, but that's what <laughs> that's I mean. And what, do you find that you've got to talk about topical subjects? As, as comedians, often go very near the edge, don't they, of, of, of many subjects? Do you find that's quite important to your, you know, to, the, to your role as a comedian? Oh, I see. Because I'm a, I'm a, I'm lazy, so I pretend to be a lazy. Um, <laughs> my Comedy is quite not rude, but like I go a bit like off. I'm a bit well. Well, you're supposed to. You're seen as like because you go on stage and you're all. I got a little and pretty dress. dress on and I go. Ah. And, and then, then like, some filth. And, yeah, filth. Not filth, filth. Like you know, I'd say it to me mother, but I wouldn't say it to me nan. Do you know what I mean? Yes. That kind of yeah. level. So I think that's kind of a bit, a bit. People don't expect it, I guess. At yeah, first. yeah. That's my kind of. But um. I try to stay away from like political things, hmm. not because like I don't want to be educated. I don't understand the world. <laughs> and I say something wrong, and then suddenly I'm in prison <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> so when you when you're sort of out there, really engaging with the audience, do, do, do you get heckled? Have you ever been heckled? Oh, I love that. Yeah, do I you love like it. that? Yeah, well, then I camp it right up, and then do you? love it. Yeah. What's the worst heckle you've ever had? Can you remember? Someone once shouted <clears throat> "face" at me. Just the word "face." And I never found out who it was, and I didn't know what to come back with. Just went, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I have one. Well done. <laughs> and legs and arms. Ooh. Yeah. How about you, Mike? Uh, you think of anything that happened? Yeah, oh, loads. Too many. I could, mm. Rude ones that I couldn't. Uh, couldn't I had a say here on Copper TV. No. No. I think a landlord of a pub once heckled me or something. Was that time? And then, no, it wasn't, no. Oh. I can't remember what he said. How does it make you feel? Do you, do you, you know, because some people would, would, would react to it, or do you think, right, do you see it as a challenge when you're heckled? I think, because you, if you're in the moment, somebody heckles and you're having a nice gig, usually the audience are against them. Mm. And if they're being funny, then you just go with it. Because yeah. some people heckle and they're not being nasty, they're just mm. trying to add. Yes. And I think you can't just slam them down. No. Um, if that's the thing. It's just, yes. if, you're, if you're in the middle of a, of a story, you've got your flow going, and then somebody say, like, last night someone just got up and went to the toilet, in the middle of this, and it was it was quite. A, it's a low stage, isn't it? The, mm. So that someone just stood up, and it was like um, right on the front row. It was like what? You've just ruined the yeah. the yeah. joke. <laughs> Off you yeah. go. There's actually there's comedians I can think of that actually then then you know give them a hard time because they're yeah. going to the toilet, and when they come back as well. But it's almost like they've never been to comedy gigs before. I think if you can heckle well, 
well, I never, I never like hecklers, but like if you can do something that make that comes out and goes, that's funny. Fair enough. I, I like that. And if you've got a good comeback to it, it's when you're in the middle of like trying to tell a story and you just kind of go, oh, again, mm. yeah. yeah. Because they've interrupted you. Yeah, they? yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> so have you got your? Are you getting your material ready in preparation for the festival? I mainly just shout it at my husband. That's why I, I prepare. I shout it at Jess, my best friend. Do you? <laughs> Basically, yeah. That's yeah. how comedians. We just shout at people. Do you shout at people? Do you ever just think of a new joke and you think it's really good? And yeah. you try and if tell them the and then just zone out. I'm on the 47 <laughs> bus just shouting at the driver. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that'd be a day you know, saver. <laughs> and then he came in. <laughs> <laughs> why do I turn into a Londoner? Do you know the lickies? Yeah, I took a rap to the lickies once. What do you think about that? Two pounds, 50 pounds. I might get a lead for one. Well, listen, we've got to take a break. Now, but stay here, stay with us, uh, and the bed. join us. <laughs> I <think> so, <laughs> I need a win. Yeah, we'll have a cup of tea and come back in a minute. So, stay with us, and we're going to come back in just a minute. Welcome back to Cuppa TV. I'm still here with Lindsay and Mike, and we've been laughing through the break. But guys, um, let's sensible just for a minute. If you were aspiring to be a comedian, what would you say would be the things that you would you know, tell them, tell the boy, female, whatever, to do. Is there anything that you can give tips about or is it just something you think you're maybe even born with, that natural ability to make people laugh? So he's looking very serious at me. <laughs> <laughs> is this your serious face? Yeah. But, you know, is it something you feel that you are, you've just got a natural talent to make people laugh or can you train yourself to become a comedian? I think you can train yourself to write. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good jokes. I think uh, I think some people just have it. I think if you're making your friends laugh a lot and your family a lot laugh, and you think, oh, I could give that a go. Mm -hmm. If people are telling you you can do it, mm -hmm. give it a go. I think one tip I would say that I wish I'd known earlier is don't be afraid to be bad because everyone's bad at first. Mm -hmm. Don't, yeah. be, don't be afraid to fail, don't be afraid mm. to die. Cause again, lots of the top comedians have said they had shows where no one laughed, they've walked mm. off, they've got heckled, booed off the stage. So you'd say just keep, keep at it. Yeah, I mean, if you've been doing it a year, and like you're still not doing <laughs> very well, then maybe, you know, keep working at the post office, but like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. But yeah. otherwise, what about you, Lindsay? Um, I would say write down everything that you think is funny um, and just test it out on people. I mean, there's so many little open mic nights you mm. can go to around Birmingham. There's that one in Cradley Heath that you like. Oh, yeah, the Hollybush Cradley Heath, um, mm. run by uh, Dave Francis. Is that a good one to go to? Oh, it's brilliant. That's where mm. a lot of people, well, everyone in the Midlands is. That's where they all start, isn't it? They're in the roadhouse. I've house. done a few gigs there. Mm. And then there's the roadhouse, the road which house, is yes. brilliant. Yes. They're every Monday. Yeah. Like, I mean, a lot of established comedians like will go there just to try out like five minutes of new stuff. And I mean, we've got Rough Works, which is like at the Glee Club every first Sunday of every <laughs> month. And like you get people like Sarah Millican goes there, mm. Joe Lysett, and then like you've got was it Gary Delaney was there not long yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, they just go out there to try new material. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's like it's, it, it was on last night, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, really good. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and then so you know again, if people are watching. There might be you know some some young guys and girls that will be watching this and thinking, you know, I really like to do it. If you had a choice, would you would you are you happy that you've gone into your role as a comedian, particularly being a female comedian as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I think it's brilliant. Mm. I mean, there are like I said, like before gigs. I honestly think I, I, I'll spend like the hour before the gig going, why am I doing this to myself? I'm clearly unhinged. Give me that bleach. I'm going to drink it. <laughs> you know what I mean? then, then like when you're on stage, you're like oh, it's time. What's all the about? Mm. So there are times I think, God, I wish I'd never done it. But. Do you, I feel like sometimes when you have a bad gig, you think. It's the worst thing in the world. I want it to be over. Oh, I'm give God, it up. yeah. I had a run of about six months of horrendous yeah. gigs and I thought, what am I doing with my life? Then you have one really, really good one and that's it. You're like, mm. yeah. I could do this. Yeah, it's all right, actually. Yeah. Not that bad. And you make some good friends as well, I think. You well, I was going to say, do you make friends along the <laughs> world? Some people. Some people, like. people who won't be named are horrible. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's a, it, there's a nice little community, especially yeah. in Birmingham, um, I think, of comedians that all mm. kind of gel together, which mm. is quite mm. lovely, really. And why do you think it is that so many females don't go into this industry? I mean, I want to ask... I've, I've personally, my, in my own head, recently, because I'm married, not to Mike, because he's not interested in that, but Mike... I've tried. Like, <laughs> I could do better than you, love. Like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can. Oh, yeah. It's been lovely seeing you. Anyway. 
<laughs> but I know it's going to sound, but in my, this is my own opinion and it's nobody else's. I keep thinking to myself, if I have kids, what do I do? Like, mm. that must be such a strain, especially. I know there are comedians out there uh, who've got babies and things like that, and I just think that must be so difficult. And I think, you know, women have like this, this role where they're at, they're at home. That sounds really horrible and stereotypical. And I think it's nice to go, especially to just go, no, forget it. I'll do what I want. Also, women are more mature than men. And I think to be a comedian, you've got to be immature. Oh, Girl. thanks, love. Like you at all. <laughs> I've got a bank account. Well, do, do, do you think you have to be quite immature to... Not in to a bad way. Not in no, a bad yeah. way, but you've got to have, like... You've, stuck, you've got to be Sense a Sense of fun, maybe? Yeah, Is that you've got to have a weird... Rested brain, brain. Mm. like, to make jokes. You've got to have that a, make sense? Do you have to necessarily... Is it, like... A big thing is you have to have like a messed up childhood to be a comedian. Why are you right? asking me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> do you have to have a messed up childhood? <laughs> no, are you still on medication. <laughs> Not anymore. Well, okay. I mean, do, you, do you, when you look at other comedians? Yeah. I mean, some of the top comedians. We've got some wonderful ones in in the in the country in the UK. We really have. Do you look at them and think that's what I want to do? That's what I want to be? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, when sometimes when you see a comedian you really admire. Uh, especially live, and you watch yes. them, and you you watch them, and you think you are amazing. Who's one of your favourites, Mike? Uh, um, I really like Ricky Gervais. Mm -hmm. I think he's a very good comedian, and really, um, I like his writing and his mm -hmm. TV programmes. Uh, Sarah Millican is very good as well. Mm -hmm. But I like character comedians. Like, I really, really like Peter Sellers and people like that who yeah. can transform themselves into other yeah, people. Yeah, really good. Mm -hmm. Would you do? Would you ever do something like going to films? I mean, cause Peter Sellers was obviously in many films but the Pink Panther springs to mm. mind um, would you like to do that would you could you see yourself in a comedy role in a film role? well before I did stand-up I was I've been acting since I was mm, f six seven so I started wanting to do stage stuff and uh, mm. and then I was kind of fell into comedy because I enjoyed making people laugh on stage mm. acting but it's something I'd like to do following on from the Lenny Henry thing yeah. I'd like to carry on acting yeah. completely and was yeah. it was it really good fun to be working with Lenny Henry yeah I didn't film any scenes with him but he was there a lot and at the premiere in Dudley a few weeks ago we saw him and he was really nice and he you know he was uh, a really funny guy, and yeah. yeah. And how about for you, Lindsay? When you, you know, is there anyone you particularly admire that you know you want to be, you aspire to be? Um, especially when it comes to like female comedian, I really like Sarah Millican. I mm -hmm. think she's she's absolutely fabulous. And then um, I love Peter Kay. Mm -hmm. I love his Phoenix Night stuff because it just reminds me of like. I mean, I wasn't obviously brought up in Bolton, but like you know, like the working men's clubs and things like that. You just go. There's this one thing he does where his dad's picking up like bits of party poppers because he's drunk and thinking they're pound coins, and I've done that so many times <laughs> in my life. It makes me laugh so, so much. It's, it's, so tell us about the festival itself now, because I mean this is a great festival. How many years has it been going now? This festival. I think it's been going since 2001, roughly. Um, and it goes all you all over Birmingham, isn't it? It's yeah. Various locations all over Birmingham. They've got a few. Is it Cherry Reds? The That's Victoria. Where, yeah. Well, as is it Cherry Red. Cherry Red, yeah. Club soon. The Glee. The Glee. Yeah. Where else? There's like the, the Mac. Is the Mac doing some bits? Maybe. But you've got lots of venues. Oh, God. <laughs> Look at the research. We sort this out. We're trying afterwards. to bounce <laughs> off each other. Is it? I don't know. I don't. I can't read. <laughs> I don't have the internet. <laughs> so when you're, you know, you're obviously you're getting, you're gearing up for it. But is there other, many other artists you can talk to? Oh, us about there's that loads, you've got? isn't there? There's loads of people we want to see, aren't there? Mm. I want to see Tom Stay. I want to see Daniel Sloss. He's on. Yeah, he's doing at the Glee Club. Um, Tom Al Yankovic. Mm -hmm. He's on. God, there's, lo there's loads. Mm. There's so I mean, there's loads of Birmingham comics, and like we've got. And the then there's other people coming yeah, in from, you know, from all Maxwell. over the UK. Who else is on? There's, yeah. there's, there's, there's blinking loads. Of them. Do you think there's a good sort of Bir Birmingham base of comedians? Yeah. Mm. Do you all sort of get together? Yeah, especially after rough works, we do. Mm. Don't we? Mm. We'll get together, have a few drinks, and after gigs, we'll have a laugh. And I was going to say, now, do you have a laugh, or is it, are you quite serious? You know, how does it work? There are some comedians, comedians yes, yeah, who, yes. Go, who go from like, they're on stage and their persona is totally different to when they're off stage. Mm. You're like, mm. how do you even work out you can be that funny? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, cause they're on stage and they're like, ah. They're like, really, like, 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 no, he's very actually, this is him calm. When he's on stage, he's actually quite terrified. I'm actually quite a depressive person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm quite serious, I don't like jokes, I don't like laughter, so if you can stop. <laughs> so when you come off, are you bouncing? Because I'm imagining your adrenaline's pumping. If it's a good gig, yeah. you feel you feel mm. on top of the world. If you've had a really good gig, mm. just everything's great. It's like you walk, you're like, ah. You mm. can have a good laugh, have a few. You pumps. could fight anyone, yes. like literally, like because the adrenaline's there. Yeah, it's brilliant. And it's pumping. Mm. When you've had a bad gig, yeah. you could fight anyone. Yeah. You, just feel, you feel like you just don't want to talk to anyone, do you? You just like. Yeah. And people don't want to. If you've had a really bad gig, oh, it's so the, scary. The other comedians don't want to just like. They're like, all right. 
Yeah, because no one mentions it. Yeah. Well, you no. try to give each other feedback. Yes. Like, I'll go, Mark, that was terrible, and I think you should go home. <laughs> you say that after a good gig, don't you? So it's constructive, constructive feedback is yeah. what we're looking for. It's, it's, it's hard, especially when yeah. someone's had a bad gig, to just even speak to them, because yeah. they want to hear you say, oh, yeah, that was brilliant. But I'll... Some people do it, and I just think, what's the point? Yeah, you can't now, lie. you're both very young, you know. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, you terrible are, lies. You are. That's you're nice. both very young. And, you know, you've got a world in front of you. Would you like to do it abroad? I mean, would you like to take your career abroad, Mike? I'm going to ask you that question first. You you see stand up abroad. Yeah. Stay there, love. I, what is it? <laughs> stay there. America, get to the States. Um, yeah. Would you like let to do you it in with your I'd cross, Go across that pond. <laughs> Australia, really? I would, yeah. I'd like mm. to. Mm. Yeah, maybe. I'll try it in America if they get, I don't know. What's your, what's your ideal? What would be your ideal gig? My ideal gig? Mm. As a stand up comedian, what oh would you like to do? Goodness. See, that's a question. A good one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just have an audience one. of at least 30 people. Yes. <coughs> All laughing at your All jokes. Laughing. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? No, would you like to do, I mean, you know, people like Michael, of course, you know, he, he sells out, you know, Wembley and, and, and twice fold. And mm. it's one man on a stage. Do, do, do you find yourself, when you look at the, the top comedians, thinking, how do they do that? I mean, there's oh, one think, man yeah, on a stage, oh and you just go out in front of thousands of people. I'd like to do a theatre one time. Mm. Like, like I'd the Apollo. I'd love to do a lot. Yeah. I'd, love the yes. I'd love to be in the position where I can make a nice, happy, little, comfortable living. Mm. I don't necessarily want to be... You don't want to be Mike No, I like to go to Northfield. I like to go to the Grosvenor without being mobbed. That's mm. my yeah. dream. <laughs> I want to go Poundland. Buy myself some insoles. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go to Bearland? They've got some good stuff in there, haven't they? They've not got the loads. Can get the cans of coke because you can get like, three flights. No, but you may as well buy a bottle because it's a quid for that little thing, and you get. I know you get two, mm. but you can buy a bottle. But they're always warm, though, aren't they? Put them in the fridge. So no, I want to drink it straight away. I want them in two. I'm trying to pull my heart out about my Sorry, aspirations. Here. Yeah. You're dragging me down some road. I'm scared. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I'd love to be in the position where I've, I've got like a, a, a good regular gigs, you know, good income, little happy life. You want it to be your job? Yeah, yeah. proper. Full time proper. job. Same, yeah. mm. be nice. And you'd be the same. Now, yeah. when, is, when is this festival then? Tell us when is this festival and when does it start? 2nd uh, of October to yeah, the 11th of October, yeah. isn't it? Again, all over Birmingham, as yeah. we've said. Um, and people can just get tickets online, presumably. Well, um, so you've got some free events as well, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, there's some free. Uh, the best place to probably have a look. I mean, they've got like a uh, little booklet. Lovely little booklet which I've left at home, and um, they, they're in Cherry Reds and the Victoria and the Glee Club and so spaces around, like that. Yeah. But if you go on online, just search Birmingham Comedy mm. Festival. It's the website's got everything on there. I, I don't think you can't buy tickets directly through the website, but normally it's through the venues. I think, but like most some things are free. I think most things uh, we've got a free all day, haven't we? And there's some stuff at the Roadhouse and things like that that's free. It's mm. good. But it's worth going. I've got nothing out on. It's a Sunday. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> My final guest today comes from Canada. She has her own blog and she's an author of True Stories and joins me today to talk about love, life and entrepreneurism. Welcome, Maureen. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you for having me. And we've got some wonderful books that we're going to talk about, but, you know, we've, we've got so much to talk about, actually. We do. We'll likely get off topic. <laughs> I think so. So, Maureen, first of all, tell us about your work as an author. When did you start to write? Oh, like every author, I probably started as soon as I could hold a pencil. But what really got me writing was my own husband, who brought me an outline one day with 75 incidents that he maintains made him the man that I married. Now, I met him at 12 years old, so wow, I thought, 12. well, this is interesting. 75 stories. He said, you should write my book. To which I said, you should write your book. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, but you're the writer. So he sort of thought I was a writer. Now, I'd written songs, and I'd written lyrics, and I'd written for ads, and I'd, you know, I'd been a writer. I had poetry published, yeah. but it was awesome to think I might try this. So I took it on, and we have 46 stories published in two books now. Wow. And do you work under your name, Maureen Haddock? I do. Yes. I do. Again, did you think about changing your name? Because authors often do, don't they? They often have a name that they use for stage or for, you know, to yes. become a writer. Never occurred to me, because I really wanted to use this book in a specific way. It started out to be a book on entrepreneurism because mm -hmm. my husband is uh, the adult version of the little boy that was very distracted in school 
And I really wanted to use the book and his stories to help other little kids that might be kind of spirited, and maybe their parents, yeah. um, think about the fact that maybe they're just entrepreneurial. Yes, I mean, entrepreneurs, is, is, there's many entrepreneurs, but yes. there, it's it has become, if you like, entrepreneurism has become a word now that people actually like and they accept. Yeah. Whereas before, you mm. were often perhaps seen as maybe difficult, people who didn't fit in the mold. Exactly, um, and whereas, it was looked down yes, upon. Yes, and people you, embrace it now more, yeah. don't they? Yeah. But t so tell us about how it all began then, writing this one. Well, it begins when you're married to the person you're gonna write about, with the outline, so I figured out which ones I, I was interested in, and I started interviewing my own husband, whom I knew really, really well. But the what was joy. That like? It was really cool. Yeah. It, it involved a bit of wine, yeah. and fireplace, quiet evening, yes. and he would, I could get his attention by asking targeted questions because he is entrepreneurial, so you can't let him get distracted. And the joy of it was um, that I learned um, the things he did. He did really without analysis. He often just had a, a vision and followed the picture in his head. So sometimes they are different. And um, then I would write the story as I had heard it. And then he would say, oh, but you forgot this. Oh, and we should add that. Oh, I remember now. And it yeah. would all come. So I would rewrite and then I would rewrite. <laughs> and we'd laugh. And then I would take it to an editor who would say, well, that's old school. You don't need that. People can look that up on the internet. And uh, finally, we would come up with the way he remembered the incident. And a lot of them are very naughty. I call them misadventures. <laughs> but the ending is what charms people, where I say, as the mature wife, what did you learn from that really awkward experience? And his, his answers are fabulous. Mm. That's where the title, Get a Bigger Wagon, came yes, from. Yes, I mean, you've got Get a Bigger Wagon, mm -hmm. and then the next one was Get an Even Bigger Wagon. Right. So tell us about what actually is the, the subject to the book. I know it's about your husband, but what's yeah. it about? It's all the little misadventures. So let me give you a sample. The, the title came from a book called The Delayed Dream. And in that book, this little boy of eight, which he was at the time, I hadn't met him yet at eight, um, notices the first three-speed bicycle that ever came into the little town we lived in, in the prairies of Canada. And he's, you can just vision him, his little face pressed up against the window and this bike, and suddenly he's got himself on the bike and he sees himself riding down the creek into the, into the water and this is going to be his bike and he's got to do it. He starts immediately collecting bottles earning money, sweeping, uh, anything he could beg the neighbors to pay him to do, and he worked for his father. Mm. Last day before he would buy this, this goes on for months, the last day he's got one day of picking bottles left, he hauls his wagon, which is his business, this little wagon, as far as he can go. We let, parents let kids go, you know, two, yes. and, two and three yes. miles from home, mm. not like today. And uh, his bottles are falling off, falling off, falling off the wagon. So he stores his extra inventory, would be the business term, yes. under the caraganas in the graveyard. Oh. And he continues home to get the next, to finish the collecting, and runs back to get the inventory. And they've been stolen. Right. Now somebody, probably an adult or a teenager took all the bottles he hid. And of course it's stretched out because the incident has become a story of four or five pages. They're a good bathroom book though, you can <laughs> depending you know on your capacity. <laughs> so in the end I say, so what did you learn from that? Mm. And you'd expect him to say, don't trust people or uh, don't leave anything for unguarded. And you know what his answer was? What was it? Get a bigger wagon. Yes. <laughs> he would have made it home. And this was That's so right. the philosophy became don't blame anybody. Yes. Don't it's your problem. Start over. Don't be yeah. depressed. It's only delayed if you're an entrepreneur. It's never And again, say so that is the mind of an entrepreneur. It Rather is. than blame, it's they, they think, well actually what can I do to make that better? Yeah, or what can I do better next time? And what time? can I do better next yeah. time? Exactly. Yeah. So the book is is kind of mini stories. Mini stories all with little lessons through. at the end. And to this day, he abides by all of those. You know, he gets his feelings hurt in one. He sets a prairie fire that they innocently did, but they vow in a solemn well, ceremony. Well, it's dreadful to have a prairie fire where we live yes. because if it's a dry year, it can really wreak havoc mm. on, and it was very serious. But they were playing with matches and they would um, get a 
fire so big that they could stomp out with their rubber boots. And suddenly the wind became the fifth party of the four boys and there was a powerful uh, movement of the fire and then they knew they had to get it out, which they managed to do. They're very smart mm -hmm. little fellows and they were eight or nine. But at the end, there's a ceremony where they bury the matches and there's a meditative pledge between the boys that this shall never mm. happen again. Because they realized how dangerous, how dangerous, and serious that they could, could have been. died. Mm. Farm animals, it was mm. serious, mm. but they solved it themselves. And I often think that the books, if you were going to make the, a short one liner, it's about um, freedom for children as a path to entrepreneurism because kids solve things. They really can, if we let them, they can solve things. Mm -hmm. Now it's frightening as parents to think they mightn't solve, but, but they can and they, yeah. di he, they did. And I mean, we, you know, this was in the 50s. The 50s and as and you said, 50s and 60s where children had far, far more um, freedom far than more. they do now. They, yeah. um, you know, you would... Uh, frightening well, amount, but I, it, it I made mean, men of boys. Girl, yeah, I mean, when I and was a little girl myself, you know, yeah. you just used to go out and used to play and then come home when you were hungry. I know. And, you know, and no one really used to worry no. about where you are. And there was no childcare in exactly. summer holidays because yes. you took care of yourself. Exactly, yes, that's right. <laughs> Not the panic today, you know. Do you feel, Maureen, that that's something that is, is missing from the children yes. today? Yes, do they Do they miss, do you think? Do, they, do the children today not have the opportunity, perhaps, to become mm -hmm. independent and to become entrepreneur? Because when you're alone, yes. that's the time when you learn your skills. So yeah, absolutely. What, do, what are your thoughts on that? I, I think we have to... Um, I, honestly, mm -hmm. this might be an incorrect thing to say, but I think we hear every bad incident because of media. Mm. And I think in the 50s, we didn't hear it all right away. We may have heard what happened locally. And bad things did happen, and we got over them sometimes, and sometimes we prevented them. But And I'm not for complete non-parenting, but there's an evidence of the parents. By the way, mm -hmm. I never call my husband by his name. He's the boy. Okay, that's so he signs to. his books, Gord the Boy Haddock, yeah. and they, they're known as his books even though it's my work, it's his life, yes. so we, we yeah. let him call it. But notice my name is on there, clearly yes, I want right. to have the credit. <laughs> so when you were writing and you were interviewing your husband, oh, yeah. did you f discover anything about him that you perhaps didn't know? Um, yes, um, mostly that everything I know about him uh, was even stronger as a child. He's modified some of his views over the years, <laughs> thank goodness. But uh, but yeah, the, I didn't know some of these events. Like I didn't know that a bunch of boys had gone to the creek and decided because one peer pressure, one boy says, "I think we should try frogs' legs today." And before anybody could say, "Oh, what, n n n you know, no, yes. no," and there's all this stuff, he had you know, done a few frogs in yes. and they were boiling frogs legs yes. and then you wouldn't dare not be part of it. So now I think he would just say, nah, not for me. Yes. So <laughs> maybe he's grown But that's back. maturity though, yes, isn't it? Yes, but you? peer pressure is a big thing for little boys. It is. I mean, and when, is, is it particular boys? Do you think boys have a lot more pressure on them than perhaps girls do? Or do you think it's just the same? I never did anything from peer pressure mm. myself. It could be me, because I often say to him, like, this would never have happened to me, because mm. I would have had more sense. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but there's a creative, I mean, I'm fairly entrepreneurial, but I made a really good wife for an entrepreneur, because mm. I have zero fear of losing everything and starting again, as long as I have my husband, whom I really, you know, need, need in my life. So I wouldn't be so, you know, mm. bold. So the material things, mm. if you lost mm -mm. the house, mm. if you lost Well, we've everything. done it several yes. times. Yes. <laughs> You Living know, with an entrepreneur. Yeah, it's like, you know, so it, it's get a bigger wagon or yeah. get another wagon. <laughs> We've got to or, get another wagon now. Yeah, get another job yes. or take a real yeah. job for a while. And then, yeah. and that's, I think, where the bad reputation came mm. from for entrepreneurs yes. is that they didn't have a real job. And maybe seen as risk takers. Yes, yes. But, then, but they aren't really, you know. Mm. They really check out things. Uh, they might want to do something emotionally, but a real entrepreneur then does the work to find out if they're on the right track. So there's research. But intuition is huge. You know how we, as women, take credit for women's intuition? Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs, male or female, have off the radar intuition, mm -hmm. like crazy good at knowing, yes, I should be there or no. And, and when if there's one story in the blue book here where Gord does not want to play trumpet. He wanted drums. And uh, it doesn't everybody, but 
anyway, for him, it was just, he was just so upset. And he got that feeling, that nauseous feeling he gets when he shouldn't do something. Mm -hmm. And he started skipping out and he never did play trumpet. Really but nice. <laughs> yeah. His mother never knew that he wasn't going. He would hide in the snow banks at the 40 below weather. Yeah. <laughs> Like, this is a child I'm not sure I could have raised, yes, you know. Yes. Lots of people have said, I don't think I could have married him, and I'm good at that. Now, over the years, have you seen the entrepreneurism still in your husband? Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Serial. There's a name for what Gord is. He's not like the... And I disagree with the, the definition of entrepreneurism. I don't think it's about how much money you earn at all. I think it's about being self-sufficient all your life it's an independence but Gord's a serial entrepreneur so when things get moving perfectly and he's done all of the work on it it's time to sell it and get something yes, else because yes, he yes. likes the challenge yes, that's it yes. but again do you think that makes that keeps you younger having those challenges in your life Does yeah that, well I think what keeps of, you young entrepreneur yeah <laughs> you know do you, do you think time it to can pack. give you white hair <laughs> as you've <Yeah>. noticed <laughs> <laughs> but I think what it does is keep you never bored, mm -hmm. so always interested. And I think what makes you seem young, even when you're quite older, is energy. Mm -hmm. So if you have energy, people see past everything to the, the, inner, mm -hmm. the inner excitement, which comes of something new, yeah. right? Absolutely. And what about when you're living together? What's the, what's the things that your husband does that you think every day, you know, oh. I mean, He's my guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I have coffee. Uh, I have coffee delivered to me every morning, Aww. and he has a coffee ceremony that he ma he he makes it with great. It's sort of his waking up. Yes. And then he decides where where in our house we will sit because we have two possible views, and it's based on whether the sun is up or if it's the dark time in the winter. It's dark. It's, it's very dark. We're at work Canada. before it gets bright, mm. so the coffee will be looking at stars and satellites. And what I like is soft music, which he agrees to, and never negative comment over coffee. It's all got to be positive, or you just sit against each other quietly. Mm. That's lovely. Yeah. And as and when you're together, do you kind of bounce off each other? Constant. Does he bounce off his ideas to you and think, oh, what do you think about this? Or yes, it surprised me when we were early married because mm. I'm a school teacher by trade, mm. and uh, and then we th when you marry an entrepreneur, you soon you soon become an entrepreneur mm. because you have to join it or, yes. or leave it. Did you realise he was an entrepreneur when you married him? Um, not as much as I did as time went on. And he started out in a job with um, an oil company and he just felt so structured. And he, he's mm. the guy. They dream. They live in their heads. Entrepreneurs live in their heads a lot. I'm quite lucky that we found a way that he could also live in my head or we could <laughs> share share our heads yes. it would be very lonesome if we didn't mm. have that mm. but he started quite young sitting me down even when the children were little and and going over what he was thinking and seeing if i would be uh, in agreement which i was number one quite flattered and number two surprised because business was not my training but um, obviously he thought that I was a kindred spirit and we were in it together. Mm. So that, that does help. If you're going to marry one of these fellows, you want to lay that out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing more fun if you get it working right, yes, you know. Absolutely. I mean, it's been an adventure. And you've oh, not yeah. just written these books. You've written other books as well. I have. Well, yeah, there's another book coming out. Another. See, I consider these two books my college degree in the uh, dramatization of the true story. Right. Everything is true in these stories and now I've taken on uh, an escape story. We have a very successful young couple in Saskatoon where I live who escaped Iraq. Um, they're, they're Catholic, they wanted to marry for love but the culture wanted to arrange and from two very different parts of Iraq so different philosophies and they are successful entrepreneurs now in Canada and their own kids don't know and some of two of three of their children came over with them they they were three years with lost paperwork and oh, settled in incredible. various countries roaming about mm. and uh finally when they got here like she said i fell down and kissed the earth <laughs> oh how lovely so you're writing a story of their life story of their life yeah. story so yeah. that's going to be oh, very it's been a learning curve um and as a writer it, you know, because you do a blog as well, don't you? I do. So you, That's my favourite thing. I'm going to say, love tell it. us about that. Well, what, it's what my do you blog story. About? Is it okay. you? No, it's called From the Cookie Jar, okay. and you can get on it by going to the Get a Bigger That's Wagon. That's a great title, From the Cookie Jar. From the Cookie Jar, yeah. because one third will be recipes, because I love cooking, and I love to talk about it, and I want it to be recipes of the 50s and 60s kind of reworked for our 
present day. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stories around the old recipes and mm -hmm. fun stuff. One third ideas, because I'm a grandmother now and you do have a few ideas you want to share. And there's new ideas that just amaze me, I like to talk about. And then one third memories, and that's um, just a potpourri of things, but I hope to write my experiences. And my latest cool. one was about the day my house burnt down and my mother sent me over to her friend's house, but her son was my bully. And I had a dreadful few weeks of severe black and blueing of my body. And I learned a secret during the burning down of my house that helped me deal with my bully. Mm. And so I'd love it if your readers would not just sign up and read that, but leave a yes. comment because yes. it left people quite quiet really? unless they're summer and no one read it. Mm. I got three three comments on that blog that said it should be a book. It should be a chapter in a book, which would encourage me to maybe do my stories. But, you know, girls in the 50s, or this girl, didn't quite have the freedom of the boy she married. <laughs> <laughs> and they, so they can contact you through your blog. Oh, yes. And leave comments. And yes. you like that. You I love the that. comments, yes. yes. And, and there's a contact on the website and the blog. And presumably from all over the world, people contact you. I do. I have many British readers who have, I was surprised that you would find this book because it's very prairie. Yes. But a British fellow just told me um, on Saturday at the match, um, the Saddler's Match, which we've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> that was really exciting. Uh, he told me that he loved the story about the horse where the, the, the boy thinks he can ride because he's seen it on television. Mm. There's a bit of fibbing in this book, like, yes, I can do that. Mm. And he said he did the same thing. He took a racehorse out of a someone's stable and thought, I can ride that. Mm. It was not such a good idea. <laughs> so if everyone yeah. who read one or two of my stories could turn around, mm and tell their own stories. Mm. That would be the best ever. And what's what's the future for you, Maureen? Because obviously you live with an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You're very entrepreneurial yourself. Yes. How do you see your future? What would you like to do? Is there anything that you want to do that you haven't yet done? Um, no, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing. I always want to be writing. I will, you know, there's so always another project. To write. Yeah, another project in the works. Mm -hmm. I'd like to maybe have more time because we're in lots of businesses mm -hmm. at the moment and there's work for me in those businesses. So I don't get probably as much time on my projects. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I mean, it's, it takes you around the world. I it mean, does. You're here. Look at this. Yes, yes you're here I'm on here. TV, which is wonderful. And, and, and so the future then will really be continuing what you're doing. Yes, I'm in schools a lot mm -hmm. with these stories and yes. I love that. And they invite me to talk about blogging because I don't know what your curriculum here is like. In grade three in Canada, at least in Saskatchewan, children are learning the importance of uh, not writing anything as a blog unless you are sure you want that there 20 years from now. Good. Like the cautionary yes, tale. Absolutely. And then why would anybody read it? And they ask yeah. me about titles. But those children do a classroom blog in Wonderful. grade three. It's Wonderful. awesome, really. Well, Maureen, we've got to leave you there, I'm afraid, but thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure to it's meet you. It's been delightful. Thank you.